This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Cross out your eyes. Sway in the morning. Shay 45. Man, it gives me a great honor to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, the editor in chief of Marvel comic books, the one and only Axel Alonso is here, ladies. And <laughs> it's just a moment for me, Heather. This is a it. moment for me because tell him Axel, you know, first of all, Marvel has such a place in my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, the first like for Halloween, first comic book character I ever was was the Incredible Hulk. Oh, that's why you told that story. Earlier. Yeah, I love the Hulk, his story. People don't understand that this was a troubled youth who witnessed his mother go through a life of domestic abuse and violence. You didn't know that? The how can you relate? Oh, I can't relate to that part. My mother. My <laughs> Man, we got a little scared. Yeah, you yeah. concerned. Yeah. I touched oh, a no, 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 no. My, my, my mother used to whoop ass. She oh, was like yeah, Florida Evans from Good okay. Times. That okay. didn't happen with me. <laughs> but it, it kind of, as a being a troubled youth and a troubled teenager, it kind of makes up his psyche of how he became the hawk when he got exposed to gamma rays. This is what it has to do with my mother because she used to work at Lawrence Berkeley Lab. Okay. And she used to have Geiger counters in her home, in her in her office that measured and monitored radiation. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so I learned about, because of the Hulk, my mother used to have, he, he, he those little Geiger counters, and I used to say, what are gamma rays? So she would explain the difference between gamma rays and different forms of radiation. So, I, you know, I had a, me and the Hulk were close. We were... <laughs> You know what I mean, Axel? I relate to the Hulk for different reasons. Why did you relate to the Hulk? <laughs> Anger management issues. Anger management issues, right? <laughs> I got a temper. I'm Spanish, so you know. Yeah. What, 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 what's your background? I'm Hispanic. I'm, I'm mixed. My my mom is uh, is English, and my dad is Mexican. Okay. You will not find two more disparate cultures. And my wife is Korean, okay. so I'm a third white European. I'm a third. Hispanic, and I'm a third Korean. Because when you're married to a Korean, you're part Korean. You're part Korean, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, my mother shops at the Korean market in Oakland. <laughs> you, you're from I know the, the Bay. One. You I know, know the, the one, one I right? Know the over one. there in North yeah, Oakland, yeah. she does. They got Koreatown over there. Um, congratulations. You once worked for DC Comics, right? I did, back in the day, yeah. yeah. Back when I had a full head of hair. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, and then is is it in the comic book world, is it a, it's a up? It's an upward move to work, go from D.C. to Marvel. Yeah, I mean, long story short, what happened is I was working at D.C. at the Vertigo imprint doing, you know, non-superhero work when Marvel reached out to me. And at the time, you know, Marvel was struggling. And I, I thought it was an amazing opportunity because, you know, these characters, we're all in love with them, right? Yeah. There's a Marvel character for everybody. And I just thought this is like an opportunity to be at the revolution. So I went and... The rest is history. I love it. You know, obviously the company's prospering right now, yeah. not only in publishing, uh, but, you know, across the board, the movies. I mean, come on. And the movies, <laughs> like we talked about this morning, have grossed nearly, what, about $18 billion? I'm certain, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't know? Shit, I don't you know. know. No. <laughs> you have nothing to do with the map. The, the comic book has nothing to do with the I, movies? I root for the movies as much as the next guy, but my oh. job security is not based on that. I'm about oh. publishing, yeah. Wait, so, so you guys aren't involved in like the movie process with just making sure you know the storyline is accurate, <laughs> things of that nature? Yeah, I mean, to a degree. Uh, you know, we're one family, right? So, so we're consulted. But the, really, at the end of the day, you know, I oversee publishing. I oversee mm. the editors who in turn oversee the writers and artists from around the world that make these comic books. And we, we tell our stories. We, 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 we fly solo. Mm -hmm. And if the studio wants to pick up on our stories like they have, like yeah. the Winter Soldier, you know, um, then uh, in Captain America, then, yeah. then they will. You know, and I think that if you take a look at the last, you know, 15 years of Marvel publishing history, we've been very influential in regards to the movies, and I'm proud of that. You're proud of that. Um, I had a quick question because Axel said there's a Marvel person for everybody. I struggle when it comes to comic. I don't. I really didn't grow up reading comic books or looking at them. But so who's for me? There's like a black girl. There's a bunch. I mean, like, I mean, for starters, one of the most uh, popular superheroes in the world is Storm, who's a black female mutant. You know. Um, I think that oh, recently... I remember that. Yeah, yeah, recently... Y'all gotta be mutants, though. You can't just be... Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Axel. Give us something. <laughs> like, kind of like mutants, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Well, you know, to tell you where that I'm coming right, from... That ain't right, Mutants. <laughs> y'all gotta be mutants. Well, I'll tell you, when I was a kid, you know, uh, and I was reading comic books, I, my grandma, my abuelita would take me to the Five and Dime on the corner, and she'd allow me to get a couple of comic books so mm -hmm. that I wouldn't bother her, right? So I, I would pick whatever looked cool off the rack, and I remember one of the first characters I loved 
was the Black Panther. Yeah. You know, he had the coolest costume, head to toe black. You can't mm-hmm. see his face. And he didn't have any superpowers. He was just really, really smart and really tough. He was like better than you. Mm-hmm. And I remember, you know, I was little. I was like five or six. I remember being really disappointed when he peeled back the mask and I saw he wasn't Mexican. Oh. So I think, <laughs> I think that, you know. They, 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 I'm like, what? What? I'm invested in this guy. But I still Alive. related, you know. Still... So I think that there's some something for everybody out there okay. if you just look. Yeah. All right. Axel well, Alonso right. is here from Marvel Comics. Um, DB is a big comic book fanatic as well. Yeah, I grew up uh, with comics because I'm an only child. So I guess it was like my way of kind of like uh, leaving reality for a little bit with getting with comic books and everything. Um I'm also big into the movies, so I know that with Marvel being one of the biggest grossing uh, companies, you know, doing all the film adaptations, uh, I know you don't deal with it, but I just wanted to get your opinion. With them doing over so many movies, like, we're about to get the third Spider-Man, they did Hulk three times over, and, like, not spaced apart, it was, like, you know, two, three years apart. Do you think that kind of makes it hard for people to kind of attach to a certain character, you know what I mean? Because you're just like, oh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, then it's the other guy, then now sure. it's another. Well, I'll make a distinction here, because Marvel Studios, it, we control uh, the certain characters. The Avengers, Iron Man, Thor, uh, those characters, you know, the upcoming Black Panther movie, mm-hmm. uh, upcoming Captain Marvel movie, we control those movies. Uh, we don't make the Spider-Man movies, uh, nor do we make the X-Men movies. Uh, that's that's Sony and Fox, respectively. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, if you want to shout at us, you don't like Avengers, you know who to call. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. But if you don't like Spider-Man, we have nothing to do with that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let me ask yeah. you this. How have you, like, kept in line in this digital age? People, kids are less likely to pick up these books and read. You know, they mostly want to obtain information online. What adjustments have you guys made at Marvel to keep... That's a, that's a great question. You know, I, I have a 12 year old son and I know that, you know, when I take a cross country flight with him, mm-hmm. uh, I, I thank God for my iPad, you know, yeah. cause he can, he can tap into anything. And we've uh, had a lot of success in growing the business through digital comic books, mm-hmm. comic books that, uh, you can read on handheld media. And we've also sort of, uh, invested in making innovations in that format. So instead of just making uh, comic books that where you just take the, you know, the printed comic book and reformat it for an iPad, we started creating these things called infinite comic books where uh, we use the device and and we use the screen as a canvas and all of the digital tools as sort of like our paintbrush Mm -hmm. to tell comics. And it's really hard to explain, but you just got to experience it. And you can do that by just downloading it on the Marvel app and checking Uh it out. But you scroll through it. It's something like... It's like reading a comic book. All the tropes are there, like, you know, balloons and yeah. captions and uh-huh. panels. Um, but it has a sense of motion and there's special effects you can use. And I know that's that that's dope. something we're growing and it's great. Yeah. So, yeah, him being from the Bay, he probably brought that idea to Marvel. <laughs> so, you know, you Silicon know Valley, you know, we were right over there. Uh, I want to open up the phone lines, 888-742-3345, and talk about a really cool thing that Marvel Comics are doing with hip hop culture. And if you want to speak with Axel Alonzo, 888-742-3345, once again. Iron Man, Buster Rhymes, Ozzy Osbourne. Had to play that. We got Axel Alonso from Marvel's Marvel Comics are, is here. Yeah, he's schooling me too, Sway. What do you school you on, Heather B? What just you learn? About, um, you know, just I was telling him how my brothers would like kind of get into it, but I grew up when Atari was first coming out and um, ColecoVision. So I started playing video games. You know, he said there was an era where people just sort of missed like the whole comic books. He said in the 90s too, it was just so different than what it is now. It was just really good pictures and no... A story behind it. So he was telling me about a female character as well that you're going to introduce me to. Um, what do you think that comics, because it's it's one of the few mediums that people still pick up and purchase, you know, like it's still popular with people as opposed to like regular magazines that people don't really buy, they just go online. Why do you think it's still sticking with a lot of people? Because I think that, you know, there's always been a collectability to comic books, right? I mean, nobody throws away their comic books because you know you that, still save them. you know, they're a little piece of history. They might be worth some change down the road to pay for your kid's education, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that that's always going to be a part of, of this medium, and I think it's a healthy thing. I think that at the end of the day, though, you got to, you, you, you rest on your story. You better be telling good stories, yeah. you, diverse stories. You know, the best Marvel comic books reflect the world and you know dating back to stan lee you know back in the day it was always about uh, making efforts to reflect the world Mm -hmm. and the world is diverse you know you guys might know know this but like right now in the marvel universe looks very different captain america is is african-american he's sam wilson he's now captain america Mm -hmm. thor is a woman 
Uh, there's a second Spider-Man swinging around, and his name is Miles Morales. Yeah. He's, he's African-American and Hispanic. Uh, and then my favorite move, the one that got me a lot of love at home, is the strongest character in the Marvel Universe, the totally awesome Hulk, is Korean. He's a okay. Korean-American kid named Amadeus Cho. Yeah. You know, and just like Bruce Banner, he's a 98-pound weakling who got given the muscles. You what know? color does he turn? Uh, oh. Spoiler alert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hilarious. Wow. <laughs> Axel, can you speak a little bit about um, the editorial process? Because you guys just think of just really wild, out-there ideas. So I'm wondering, do you guys brainstorm all together? Do people have wild dreams and then they bring those into fruition? How does it happen? It's a collaborative relationship between the editors and the writers and one of the things we do to, uh, you know, spur the process along is we have three or four times a year, we have an editorial retreat. Mm. And that is where the editors and mm. a, a number of our, our, our famous writers come in and we just talk through the Marvel Universe. The, here are my plans for Spider-Man. You know, I'm, I'm launching a Black Panther book. This is what I want to do. And we call it the gauntlet because mm -hmm. you go to that room, your ideas better be good because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. someone's going to rip them apart if they're not. And... And it's a great environment. We argue. There's never a time when I don't want to just rush, run across the room and hit someone. But you come out the other side with great stories and mm -hmm. lots of love at the, for the process. Dope. Who yeah. came, uh, uh, Axel, who came up with this idea to, uh, to, to marry hip-hop culture with Marvel's comics? Um, well, that would be me. The, the way it came up. just started. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm not flying solo here. And, and tell us what you guys got what you got going to right sure. now. What we have do, doing right now is we are doing, uh, we're calling it the Marvel Hip Hop Variants. Uh, we're in the midst of doing an uh, initiative called All New Marvel, All New, All Different Marvel. That's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. That in which all of our books are, are starting with a new issue one and a fresh creative direction. And I had this idea that it might be cool if we did... Uh, homage covers to classic and iconic hip hop covers. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, covers that span the spectrum from, you know, the earliest old school, you know, Sugar Hill Gang, mm -hmm. you know, Spoonie G, all the way through now, you know, Drake and 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 Future. Uh -huh. And the goal was let's do, you know, we knew we were gonna be launching about 60, 65 titles. Let's do one for every uh for every new issue. Uh and uh it's been a fantastic success, it's been you know, a big success. The, the, the love we've gotten, you know. How, how do you determine, though, like which album co covers you pay homage to? And is that, you know, we got Rob Markman here and all, all my crew here. We argue all the time about what's the dopest cover, who's the yeah. dopest MC. Did y'all go through that? Yeah, yeah. You know, you had to start somewhere. And where we started mm -hmm. is I looped in a few guys that I knew were big hip hop heads, artists mm -hmm. like Sanford Green, mm -hmm. Damien Scott, Mahmoud Asrar, Mike Del Mundo. And we just kind of settled, you know, there's certain covers that you you know you've got to do an homage to. Yeah. You know, they're just too iconic. I would use The, the Chronic. chronic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Doctor Strange, The Chronic as an example. Yeah, right here. Uh, Dr. Dre, The Chronic, that's an iconic cover. And yeah. so what you do is you try and marry that that cover to the character you think is most appropriate. Okay. Uh, and so we started there. There were just certain covers we thought were just, we couldn't be denied. You know, oh, Midnight dope. Marauders by Tribe Called Quest. That's oh, Spider-Man. Yeah. Right? That's, yeah. That's yeah. fire. We tied that to Spider-Man. That's dope. Um, That's I dope. brought three because these are the first three that were printed. And yeah. then we yeah. went back to Dennis Cowan, who did the original cover for uh, Jizza Genius's Liquid Swords. And he did an homage to that cover. Uh, so he uh, he bit himself, he sampled himself, and he did the cover to call his champions. Mm -hmm. So we tried to pick out the covers, you know, like Straight Outta Compton had yeah. to make the cut. Uh -huh. um, you know, uh, we thought we figured Tikal had to make the uh -huh. cut. Uh -huh. uh, you know, and and but we wanted to span thirty years. Yeah, we uh, we did Tupacalypse Now yep. for Daredevil, strictly uh -huh. for the kitchen. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and I had, I gotta give a lot a shout out to my man Chris Robinson at Marvel. Uh, assistant editor who's been invaluable. Uh -huh. He's the one that had ideas for covers like Lil B. You know, convinced <laughs> me we need to do one for Lil B. I didn't know who Lil B was, but now I do. You know? <laughs> okay. uh, you're a follower, huh? I knew who Eric B. and Rakim was. But okay, yeah. but people, how can people get these uh, special editions? Yeah, basically, these are uh, go to your comic book store. Let your comic book retailer know that you want that cover. You yeah. know, if you want that that Nas Illmatic Miles Morales Spider Man cover, let your retailer know. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the opportunity to. Uh, Order that book and adjust those orders to fulfill that. Okay, we got um, Steve on the line uh, from Houston on the uh, on the line with us right now. Steve, what's your question? What up, Steve? Steve, you there? Oh, Steve. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, Q. We have a technical difficulties right here. He's there, Steve. All right, Steve. There you go. What's up, Steve? Steve. I have a question about Stanley. What is his part in all this as as things move forward and 
I've seen a lot of cameos with him on TV, movies and such. What exactly is he doing now as far as in this uh, up and coming and, and everything else that's going on right now? Well, I'll start by saying Stanley is an excellent rapper. Trust me. No, St- Stan doesn't really have much of a role at Marvel right now. Um, obviously, he's the architect. Uh, it all started with Stan. We have utmost respect for him. And we communicate with Stan. Frequently, uh, I will consult him or my editors will consult him about a new editorial direction. And you will not find a more progressive, forward-thinking, hipper dude. Trust me. He's, it's like uh, I wanted to be my, my grandfather, you know? Okay, we got Robert from Vegas. Hello to Axel. Go ahead, Rob. Hey, Axel, how you doing this morning? I'm great, thanks. Um, all right, so sorry. My question is, um, I, from what I understand, Marvel was going through difficult times, so they ended up selling the rights um, to a few characters of Fox and Sony. Now that movies are making millions of dollars across the board, I want to know, is that something that Marvel regrets or is something that they accept because they possibly wouldn't be where they are now if they didn't sell the rights to those characters? You know, that's a business thing. I, I, speaking for myself, you know, I... I'd love to see Marvel Studios producing those movies. I think you'd have seen some fantastic movies. But, you know, that's yesterday. You know, we are where we are. We have some fantastic characters. <laughs> Our catalog rolls deep. You know, I'm super excited about the Black Panther movie. I'm super excited about the Ms. Marvel movie. I mean, Captain Marvel. So, you know. Okay. Uh, Martinez uh, from North Carolina. One last question. Go ahead. What's going on in the morning, guys? What's Good up? Good morning. You. All right. Quick question. Guardians of the Galaxy. Best fucking movie I've ever seen. I'm not going to lie. I ain't going to front. And I love The Avengers. I love Iron Man. I love Incredible Hulk. But do you think, because on Age of Ultron, they showed Hulk getting on a, on a, on a, on a thing, I forgot, a, a ship, and went straight to, like, space. Do you think Galaxy Hulk will be shown on Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Mm. Uh, I don't have any inside knowledge, bro. I don't. What I'd say is I, I'd pay to see that. Oh, you could have done better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket, Raccoon, and Hulk, that would be pretty dope. I, I, gotta, have, I wouldn't have said yeah, I don't yeah. know. I would have just been like, you know what? Take my advice. It's worth it to pay to see if that's true or not. What I, he said. Okay, Axel Alonso, <laughs> man. Thank you for coming by, man. Congratulations. Once again, people, go to the comic book stores. Um, order these special editions of uh, Marvel Comics uh, with the hip-hop covers, homage to them. What are you calling this series? The Hip-Hop Variants. The Hip-Hop Variants, okay? And they could go online, too, if they want to see more about Marvel. Just Yeah, just Google, the app. Yeah, Google Marvel Hip-Hop, and it'll all come up. You'll, you'll, be, you'll see a lot of visual aids. It'll sell itself. Thank you, Axel, man. Thank, Thank you. you for coming Thank on you. the show, too. All right, all right? man. <laughs> Axel Alonso, I'm, I'm good now. He represented the yeah, Raiders yeah. and all and Rapper, that. Golden State Warriors. This dude is all right. Marvel is okay with me. I always pick Marvel over DC, too. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.